thinking earlier about what to do today's mum days video on uh, and I was thinking about all the things that I've spoken about before, things that have, have popped up in the podcast and stuff and it actually made me realise that although I talk a lot about um, my body and stuff, about my body, uh, on Instagram, I don't really talk about um, my body and um, my feelings towards it and how they've changed before and after pregnancy. I, I was always the larger one out of me, uh, Georgie and Mario. That's not to say I was a large child. Uh, I did like my food, but I, you know, I wasn't particular. I was probably just a little bit chubby. And I think that always played on my mind. Like I always knew that I was the chubby one, probably because they told me that as well. Um, but I can remember being sat on, uh, on Frinton Beach uh, when I was nine and, uh, and finding these stretch marks in my uh, inner thigh and uh and and being quite um not disturbed just didn't quite understand where they'd come from but i can remember actually feeling that they actually felt weirdly quite nice you know <laughs> not smooth having like those lines uh like tiger stripes in there so i can remember being nine when i first saw that and and i don't know how long the tubby thing had been going on but certainly for quite some time um, and actually when I was bullied when I was younger that was something that uh, uh, come up that I was a uh, fat they call me fat I don't think I wasn't necessarily fat um, but the word fat I, it's a funny one isn't it I don't think it's um, I think we were grown up to believe that fat is this awful thing and and that we should all be really ashamed if you are not uh, stick thin and I think that kind of thought followed me up through my teens um, and uh, and into my early 20s um, and I never really felt like I was um, as skinny as the other girls. I don't think I ever felt as comfortable in my body as some of the other girls. But then I say that and I can remember some of the outfits that I used to wear out. They literally left nothing to the imagination. So perhaps even though I had those insecurities, like I could not wear those outfits now. But regardless, I can remember always feeling like I was one of the larger ones. I never felt like I was a skinny girl and I thought that skinny was in, skinny was the way to be, skinny was attractive. Um, and I think, so I was always kind of going after something that I simply wasn't. I'd do silly things. Um, I can remember actually once for a school project having to look up pro-anorexia websites and at that time they were huge. And I can remember going online and, uh, and finding them and finding them more fascinating than what I actually should have done. Uh, I became really intrigued with what these girls were doing. I never went there, I never went down that road, but it did make me realise how influenced, how easily influenced I could be on something like weight when I was uh, so insecure and um, so unhappy with the way that I was. But I can actually remember a chat with my sister once. I can remember saying something to her and um, I must have been in, uh, well she was at school with me. Oh, no, I know, I was like 17 because we were going out and things. And I can remember saying to her something about my body and her saying, loads of my friends talk about your body and they would love your body. And be, me being a bit like, what? <laughs> like, you just don't, I think you don't really see that. You're always comparing yourself to other people. You're not really looking, or looking at other people and seeing what they have. You're not really looking at yourself and looking at what you have. I now look back at photos of me then and I'm like, oh my God, you are so hot. You are so attractive. Look at that washboard stomach. Look at those pert boobs and that little bum, those legs. It's just funny, isn't it, to look back and kind of you know where your head was at at that point and, and how, um, how much more you would appreciate that, I think, uh, if you were to have that again. So before we got married, I discovered I had PCOS. So I came off the pill, I found out I had PCOS and um, my periods weren't returning. I, um, I got, I put on weight, I got hairy, I got spotty. Um, yeah, I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling my best on any level because all of those things kind of knocked my confidence a lot as well. I can remember being put on metformin and that kind of leveled things out a bit for me and a different pill actually. Uh, and that all kind of helped me. But I still, you know, I had this ongoing thing in my head and then after that, uh, when we did start trying for a baby, sadly, I had a miscarriage. Um, and at that point, my attitude towards my body, um, it was at the lowest that it's ever been. Um, I felt so angry at my body because I've been trying to have a baby and, and then getting there and then not getting there. I just felt so angry that my body wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. Um, that it was failing me. I felt like I was failing and my body was the reason for that. 
Um, and actually it took quite a few months for me to get over that, um, that feeling. And I can remember my friend, a very dear friend of mine, um, saying that he'd seen this professor on a TV program talking about PCOS and diet and stuff. And he handed me this book and was like, look, you should try this um, because it, it could help. And he was being so sweet and so thoughtful. But in my head, I was like, why? Why do I need this blooming book when other people out there can get pregnant without it? And here I am having to have this book that's going to tell me to eat nothing. Um, and it did actually, this book first of all tells you all the things that you can't eat before it tells you things that you can. Um, so I did kind of feel like, why, why am I the one that's going to have to punish my body even further? Um, you know, why, why, why? Just angry, angry, angry. I don't know what happened. I just, just suddenly stopped. I stopped and was like, stop. <laughs> um, this is not healthy. Um, and once I let go of the anger, and I did a massive detox. I felt amazing. I felt absolutely incredible um, for the first time in a long time. I wasn't the smallest I've been in my 20s because I did a show uh, in London at one point and, and got down to the lightest I've ever been and I really didn't like that. I didn't like the way I felt. I felt fragile and um, it wasn't healthy. It was through anxiety, not being able to eat. So that wasn't a healthy moment in my life. But at this point, after the detox, when I was filling myself with goodness, um, literally I say detox, I was cutting out red meat, um, caffeine, uh, alcohol, sugar, Oh, and gluten. So I was cutting out those five things and I felt incredible off of that. Um, and then I felt pregnant again. Um, but I've got to say that it was actually during my pregnancy with Buzz that I really felt like I could embrace my figure. Being a woman, I felt more womanly, more sexy than ever I, than I ever had before. And it was, it was amazing. I felt amazing. Uh, I had buzz. I mean, you know, fair enough. I knew that my body wasn't what it was, so I needed to look after a little bit more. Uh, and then fell pregnant with Buddy, had Buddy. And then I had this thing uh, 11 days after having Buddy, which has been documented, so uh, you probably all know, where um, this lady, a nurse, uh, I was feeding Buddy. We had to take him to hospital, hospital for something because he was had an infection in his finger now. And um, which is the same thing that Buzz had when he was first born, but blah, blah, blah not related at all um and uh anyway i just finished feeding him obviously i was quite emotional we were back in the hospital i was worried about buzz being at home and um and the nurse turned to me and she looked at my tummy and she laughed and she said ah mommy's still got her tummy and um and that crushed me at that moment i laughed i felt crushed i cried and then a few days later i thought actually my body is amazing and i've got to embrace everything that it's given me you know i thought it had failed me I, I was so angry at it and um actually i should be thankful for everything that it's given me um so that was a like, major turning point for me in, in my that was amazing for me to reach that point but i think it's important to say that since then there are moments that i do feel like that there are moments that i fully embrace that feeling of my body giving me these two boys that are asleep upstairs right now who i love with my whole heart but there are also other times where i look at my body or i just not even looking at my body just feel a bit meh meh um and i think it's important to acknowledge that as as well as the other message that i send out that our bodies are amazing and i'll post a link below of uh, people on instagram who are so body confident because i think it's so important to have those people in your timeline not people that you're constantly comparing yourself to and i think that is my point uh, i have realized over the last little while that i need to stop comparing myself to other people other people that have given birth not given birth and also to stop comparing myself to the 18 version of me I am not 18 anymore. I have had two children. Um, <laughs> I mean, life has moved on. I could have that size eight, size 10 figure, but I wouldn't have Buzz and Buddy. And would I want it? Would I want to do the swap? No. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I am actually having a bit of a bleh day. Um, so I did feel like I wanted to come on and talk about my body. <laughs> Just because I felt like I wanted to come on here and say that you don't have to be body confident all the time, that it's fine to have those moments those blips, it's absolutely fine. Um, but just remember that your bodies, you only have one. So look after them and embrace them in whatever shape and whatever they are. I mean, warts and all, it's all good. Embrace those stretch marks, those wobbly bits, those lumps and bumps. 
Or if you've got a nice smooth tummy, embrace that too, because you never know when it's gonna go. <laughs> Let me know about your relationship with your bodies and how that's changed over time. Uh, I'd be really interested to know. I think that uh, our relationships with our bodies is a really personal one, and it's not enough to just kind of say to people, you are great, your body's amazing, because you can feel that sometimes, and you can feel the complete opposite the next day. I just wanna start a little conversation about body confidence and not saying you need to be on it all the time, uh, but just seeing how you are, just checking in. Right, I am off, but I shall speak to you on Friday. Bye. We are here on this very earth to love and to be loved.